Alexa Dunn here and today I want to go a little bit into the behind the scenes of when you are an author with a literary agent, you're being published, etc. How everything works with film and TV. Getting your book made into a film or a TV show. This question came up kind of off the back of my recent Reacting to Unpopular Opinions video because we talked a bit about the dream of wanting to have your book turned into a film or a movie, but how does that stuff actually work? With the disclaimer, I can only speak to my limited experiences as well as the experiences of author friends I know where I have basically picked their brain as good things have happened to them because I uh, one of my dreams is I would love to see my books turn into TV or movie, but like my heart really would love a TV show. So I've asked, how does this work? Plus some of my own experiences and because I do live and work in Los Angeles, California in the industry, I do have multiple friends who work on TV shows. So I've also asked them like, how does some of this work? So I have information for you. As always, my experience is primarily in traditional publishing. That said, some of these things may apply to indie published, self-published authors because a self-published or indie published author can get their own kind of representation on the film and TV side. And so once that happens, I don't know exactly how that necessarily happens, but there will be self-published and indie authors who will have a better like way of talking about that. It's like getting an agent for your sub rights essentially. But from that point, the process would go exactly the same regardless of your publishing path if you have a film and a TV agent. So how do you get a film and TV agent? So in traditional publishing, I've seen it a variety of ways, but most good and reputable literary agencies have some sort of pathway to this, approach to this. And you can sometimes see when you are researching an agency how this works with them, but you can and should ask on the call as well, like how does this aspect of sub rights work with the agency? I can tell you my experience is a probably is the most common one in the sense that most literary agencies don't have in-house film agents. So I guess I can front load with the more rare one. There are a couple of literary agencies that have film agents who work at the agency. Really, it's New Leaf Literary. They have this model, but there are also a handful of agencies and you know which ones they are because you know that they are Hollywood talent agencies. CAA, WME, ICM, Paradigm, agencies like that. Like they're actually mostly Hollywood talent agencies and literary is like a division there and so there are more Hollywood talent agencies than they are literary agencies and obviously if you sign with a literary agent at one of those agencies you're very like you probably have a built-in film or TV agent. So those are the more rare ones. But in the case with most other literary agents, they will shop the books that they represent to film and TV agents very much like they would to an editor. Slightly different though because it's you're not like selling your book to them, but you were saying, hey, this is a client, this is the book, it's sold. In most cases, this happens after something is sold, but not always. Would you be interested in representing this for film and TV rights? And there are like a small handful of people in the industry on the Hollywood side who are known for specifically representing things that are literary properties to get them made into film and TV shows. And literary agents have varying different relationships with different film and TV agents. In my case, my agent had an existing relationship with Mary Pender at UTA, who is a wonderful, wonderful person. And so she sent my stuff to Mary and Mary agreed to take it on. Mary represents me not so much as an author, but on a book by book basis. So she took on Brightly Burning specifically and she reps the Ivies. This will sound bad, like, cause as, like, I just feel like my entire second book is a fog. I don't think. That, that was shopped, but Brightly Burning was, and the Ivies has been. And then Murder, She Texted is one we'll approach once we have a full, you know, revised manuscript to send over to Mary and so on. Not all books and authors end up getting film and TV representation. It's definitely kind of a crapshoot. It varies widely. And again, why you can ask the question on an offer call, like which film agents do you work with? Do you have any properties that have been optioned or turned into films to get a sense of, is this an agent and an agency that frequently places work with their clients with good film and TV agents, if that is something that is important to you. So we're gonna talk about why like, 
<laughs> you're, you're gonna be amazed at all of the layers and the steps and the uncertainty that comes here. Though we really do want to stress, film and TV rights, like getting an agent, etc., etc., is such both a crapshoot and a long shot that I don't suggest making all of your literary career decisions based on that necessarily because in some ways it's way easier to be an author first than bank on film and TV. Like, well, we're gonna talk about it, but I mean, you know, you've heard of cases where like that huge, big blockbuster best-selling book was optioned for TV, yay. And then you notice that it was never made into a TV show. That happens all the time. So that's next, what happens next? Well, and one thing worth talking about, because sometimes there's like a skip step. Sometimes your agent is shopping your book and they get you a film and TV agent and then it's their job to take the next steps. But sometimes your literary agent or your publisher may be approached from the other side by a production company, by a network even. I feel like that's a lot more rare, but that can happen. And so it's not always the straight line, but it's more common to be the straight line. So I just mentioned the word option. So what is an option? The magical word, your book being optioned for film or TV. An option is a wish. An option is an option. It is when an entity, and we'll talk about some of the entities, pays you the author and your both of your agents get a percentage off of that. Um, a lump sum for the privilege of trying to work on your book to turn it into something. So you get a lump sum and they really vary. I've heard for the most part, it's not like champagne money. It's like $6,000 or $10,000 though. You, I've also heard, I feel like this doesn't happen so much, but like in the boom days of YA, I heard sometimes it's like $75,000 for an option. And you're like, I would like that money please. But it's far more common to be a much lower amount. So let's say $6,000 for the privilege of optioning your work. Uh, the term will be 12 or 18 months often for like the first term. And then there's usually an option to extend the option where they would pay you a further sum of money to extend the option 12, 18 months to give them more time to work on something. So then there's the st are the steps of it actually being turned into something. But for the next kind of walkthrough explanation of what your agent is going to do, we're thinking of this in terms of your work being optioned. So you have a film TV agent, what happens next? Honestly, in my experience, it's all very cloak and dagger. It's like you don't hear anything, but theoretically things are happening and you'll hear if there's good news or if you and your agent request a call to like check in. For me, it, it was quite the, it has been quite the interesting opaque experience. So Mary Pender took on Brightly Burning in 20, 17, yes, it was before it came out, because I remember I was at a family wedding when I found out the news that I had film uh, agent representation, film TV agent representation. And I didn't, I just didn't hear anything for a while, but then I was at Y'all West when my book came out. Was that 2018? The Sands of Time, actually, it might have been 2019. What is time? I think. Let's say it was, I think it was 2019. I met Mary at Yalwa. She happened to be there and I met her at a party and she knew exactly who I was. Then I was like, okay. And we had a wonderful conversation. I adore her. And she told me all the things she'd been doing for Brightly Burning, the people she had sent it to and lots and why she loved it so much. And I was like, wow. This is my film slash TV agent, and technically I have a co-team. Mary co-reps me with another agent, and she was there too, and we all met, and we were gushing, and I told them, this was 2019, because I told them about, did I tell, yes, I told them about the Ivies. And so yeah, that whole time, like, they were, of course, doing their job, but like, I wasn't hearing a lot of things, and same thing with the Ivies, because this is now two years later. We've had a couple touch base calls, they've talked to me about strategy, I got to like, share ideas about like, were there specific producers that I was interested in? Because really you're shopping an option. Yes, you can go straight to network, but so often they're shopping it to producers. It's all about who would produce something and there are different levels. So who, who are they shopping it to? Sometimes literally producers, people who are known in the industry for producing, most often with 
production companies. They set up production companies. And these are the ones where you see a movie and like the first title is say Universal, but then you see a series of titles. Those are most often the production companies who have worked on a thing. And very often it's those are actually the companies who bought the thing. And sometimes the studio comes in to make it, but sometimes the studio only comes on for distribution. There are all, that gets into like, how, how are things, how are things made? So many different ways, but they'll send it to producers or production companies. There's also the attaching a big talent route. They will send books to actors and actresses to read with the hope that they will fall in love with a project and go, oh, if that gets made, I'll star in it. And then the agent is able to use that to essentially package both in the literal sense which is a whole thing in Hollywood and there was a whole strike which I won't get into but also like the the non-official way the non-bad way of packaging of going okay we have this actress on board so now we could definitely get a, produ a producer or production company on board and they'll hire a writer and we'll put it all together and then we'll pitch it to the big networks or to the movie studios etc. You can also do it the other way very often once a production company is interested the they'll They'll also want to try to get talent attached because it increases the odds of, of selling the thing and actually getting it made, which we're going to talk about. The other um, option uh, often for the option can be writers. Uh, the agent can go to known kind of writers who like to develop and then produce their own work to attach themselves to it. Though sometimes it's often it can be a writer who wants to option your material like they might come to your literary agent that I've definitely heard of that as like a direct method where like you almost skip the step of having a film agent though I'm pretty sure when that happens the literary agent would get someone to negotiate the option uh, I'm not 100% like clear on that but I mean there's so many different ways that things get optioned but your fancy schmancy film and TV agent may very well indeed also shop you to studios. They might send it to someone who they know at Netflix or someone who they know at Amazon, uh, NBC, ABC, and so on. It really varies. I mean, they want to sell and get this optioned and made as much as you do because your film and TV agent gets a percentage, just like your literary agent. So you're all in this together. You're a team. So they're sending it out to lots of different people. And as I said, in my experience, it's just like it happens in a vacuum. They're working on you. They believe in you. They love you. Uh, and you'll hear when you hear something. And also so this is very different when you are working in Hollywood and you are actually someone who has like a talent manager or an agent at one of those big Hollywood agencies. Um, I presume you know a lot more about your career, but it's a total, it's just book to move to like property pipeline. It's, just, it's very different because we are primarily authors. We primarily are writing books. And I'm sure there are authors who maybe they do talk to their film TV agents all the time. I just, I tend not to fuss with it, though as I said, I do love having a good touch base call. Uh, Mary and Addison are well aware, because they know where I work, <laughs> and we talk shop sometimes, which is very, very fun. I'll be like, oh, so I happen to know XYZ is happening because of this industry thing that I know. What do we think of this? I. I do enjoy that, but I, I know not everyone is like me. Okay, so now let's talk. This is actually, this is, this is the, I guess, depressing part. So, great news. Someone wants to option your book. It's amazing. You're going to get that lump sum, as I mentioned, so that they can have that period where they're going to try to work on this and try to turn it into something. And so we're going to call this level one. Book optioned is level one. It is comparatively relatively easy to get your book option for film or TV. And if it happens, it's great. Throw a party. It's basically free money. You already wrote the book. Someone's paying you money for the privilege of working on it, right? Everything else, we're going to talk about level two and level three. It's a statistics thing. A ton of things get optioned all the time and a ton of them you will never hear about. Some authors are able to announce that their work has been optioned, but far more often they're not. And you will only hear if something was optioned if something is going into production or if it's a case where like whomever has optioned it wants to like make an announcement in the Hollywood Reporter or Deadline.com. Uh, but I have I have heard of people and known people who have had their books optioned and that was never announced. It stayed a secret. 
and then it went nowhere, the option expired, and that was it. So that is the depressing thing. The vast majority of books that are optioned don't ever go anywhere. It's just a numbers game. Everyone's always trying to pitch something and make something happen in Hollywood, and more often than not, it doesn't go anywhere. So my advice overall is to just hedge your bets and lower your expectations <laughs> across the board. Like, don't stress too much about getting a film and TV agent in the first place. If you get one, it's super cool. Don't stress out about having your book option. If you get it option, that's amazing. It's super cool. And you are indeed one step closer to having the cool dream than otherwise. So we're gonna talk about level two and level three. So what comes next? So it kind of varies when you've been optioned. It depends on who is optioning you and how you were shopped, but generally speaking, what what comes next? There will be a writer attached to write the pilot, if it is a TV show or the screenplay, if it is a movie, asterisk. This is where I kind of want to talk about what you and as an author can expect and are asked for, but slash what what my advice is. So when you are negotiating the option, you can nego you're negotiating pay and there are also terms that come with an option and it's like a just in case. And they'll tell you, if this is made into a movie at a major studio, you get this lump sum payment. If this is made into like a picked up to be a movie, not even made, like if, it, if it's greenlit, if it's greenlit to be a TV show at a major network, you get this amount. Second tier, you get this amount. And then it says you'll get X amount per episode. Um, you'll get this title. And so I can tell you for TV, I asked my TV friends about this. What's pretty standard is you get the title of consulting producer and I guess sometimes that'll just show as producer. Some authors are able to be executive producers. It, it depends on their clout. <laughs> but essentially you will get a perfunctory producer title which comes with another payday so it's very nice like when things actually get made you do start like bathing in cash which is why it's really nice whether it ends up actually being a thing or not you, you're still gonna get a, a payday. Well the it actually has to go into development so we're gonna talk about those levels but um my advice definitely like talk to the film agent and make sure like you get that consulting producer thing but the asterisk here is knowing and then we're gonna talk about writing in a second um it's never guaranteed or it's rare to have it guaranteed because at the end of the day it's up to if it's a film i believe it's gonna be like the executive producers slash the director slash studio who ultimately say whether or not you have any say in anything because there are some consulting producers who like slash producers who work on their authors who work on their own stuff who actually have a substantive say in what happens but honestly whomever buys your stuff has every right to say like we literally don't care what you think like we'll give you a title and give you eighty thousand dollars but bye and that happens a lot uh, but sometimes they do actually want your input so it varies so like set your expectations so the second thing is writing a big mistake i've seen some authors do or I'll say, I again, I talked to my industry friends and they were like, a big mistake they see is when an author who has zero experience in Hollywood or screenwriting demands that they will not allow their material to be optioned unless they write the screenplay. And this can be a mistake for many, many reasons. Hollywood hates this. Asterisk, not always. Sometimes there are authors who do this and it was the best possible thing and whether they had experience or whether they like gained the experience so I will tell you like some this will sour some business deals is what I mean to say some business deals they'll go because they've had bad experience in the experiences in the past with know-it-all authors who actually did weren't very good at adapting their work for film and tv and they'll go we don't even want to bother with that that said there are levels here you could request but they are free to deny your request to co-write uh with them so they would hire a more uh, experienced person and you would be paired with them to co-write say a screenplay um but my advice having talked to my friends when it comes to tv adaptations um ask to be in the room as a staff writer is my advice you can go c producer only as well or you could you can ask to be in the room but as 
the lo a low level writer because you have no experience and you, you need to learn the ropes and what it's like to actually work in a room, do not insist on writing the pilot is basically the advice. Uh, being in the room, you may end up getting a, a credit, a co-credit, or even possibly a solo credit depending on an episode, but you want the package that goes out to a studio after the option, or even if it's bought by a studio, you want the pilot or the screenplay to be as strong as humanly possible. And honestly, attaching an experienced writer name to your project, much, much higher odds of it actually being made. So from the point that something is optioned, this is not about your ego or controlling your baby. It's about what is the Hollywood magic that is most likely going to lead to this being made. And having someone experienced write the pilot or the screenplay is a better way to do that. So they're gonna hire a writer. Sometimes that writer is a writer producer or a writer showrunner. And that's more common in TV, obviously, where they are known for showrunning and like writing the pilot and like being the creative force behind the thing and getting it made. So they'll try to attach someone. As I said, they're gonna try to attach talent and then they're going to try to get it into development and then out of developmental hell. So into development. This is getting someone to green light it, to agree to make the thing. This is when you're most likely to see announcements. And so from there, it becomes the question of, are, is it actually a thing? Is it actually being developed? Like, yeah, they ha hired one writer, but are they staffing the room? Do we have, like, did they make a pilot and did the pilot actually get picked up? And it's all the steps in film and TV. And this is where, yeah, the vast majority of things that are optioned, even if they move to this stage, never escape development hell. And development hell is when something is in development for years and years and years and years, and it never becomes a real, Thing. So that's level two. <laughs> and then level three is something actually being made. And so it's the least common, but it's kind of amazing, obviously. And so I want to jump back briefly to, to options for the option. I talked about like, don't insist on writing if it's gonna kill the project, that you have opportunity to be a producer on, on your thing, even if it's title only, but it's great if it's not title only, if you have actual input. Another just like piece of advice. So an option's amazing, but if if you can turn down an option is what I'm meaning to say. If the offer that you get, if you have a gut feeling, I recommend having a phone call with whomever it is who wants to option your material. If your gut feeling is they don't understand the soul of the book, you're familiar with some of their work, whether it's a production company, a showrunner, a network, or even an actor you can like think about that actor's reputation if your gut tells you because we we've all seen cases where books we love are turned into kind of side eye suspect film and tv adaptations we've all seen it so you have to go on a gut check is this the right person to work on this it can mean you end up passing up an opportunity but it can also mean that you dodge a bullet and the second thing that i've heard of um, be wary of people who are offering, who want to option your material or even make your material just to get your IP. And what I mean by this is if you've ever had a case where a book was turned into a TV show or a movie and then you watch the thing and you barely recognize the source material, this may be the case. It's just a Hollywood thing. It is currently in a lot of ways easier to get IP, so intellectual property, made into something because studios don't, don't love, they're very bad at taking risks nowadays and they love to be able to say, ooh, from the, the book, blah, 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 blah. Um, so some entities uh, purposefully seek out books that are close enough to an original thing that they really want to get made that by attaching IP to something they are already developing, they can get it greenlit, but that means they are already in love with their own original ideas and, and they have a vision for what they want to do. So let's say they really want to sell a soapy drama set on a cruise ship. <laughs> And they really want to get it off the ground and they so they, they will go to film and TV agents and say do you have something set on a cruise ship so let's say you've written a romance written on a cruise ship or a thriller written on a cruise ship set on a cruise ship 
um, they may option your material to attach it but then they're really going to go with the soapy drama they had in mind. They might graft some of your stuff onto it because it's still technically IP, but you may not recognize what comes out of it. So it's just, it's like doing a gut check and like talking to whomever wants to option your stuff so that you feel confident. And you can ask them questions like, like, which showrunners would you approach or who would you approach for writing the screenplay? What talent do you have in mind? And then do the gut check of are the people and things that they're suggesting, is that vibing with you? So that is it in a nutshell. There's obviously all this other Hollywood stuff that is a lot, uh, but don't count your chickens before they hatch. It's, as I said, a lot of things will get optioned and simply never made into anything, but it's amazing if you get optioned. It's free money. And also, like, my my philosophy as an author, as much as I just warned you, like, be careful of who you sell your material to. I mean, yes, and don't be too pushy about having creative control, because honestly, often Hollywood's just not going to give it to you. They're going to be like, you're an author, so no. The thing about film and TV is that they are different mediums from novels and inevitably they're going to have to change things about your book. That is, that is just the way it is. And especially if your book is being turned into a TV show, they have to add a ton of stuff to it because a single book rarely has enough, especially with subplots, to support a season of television because we, if we try to cram the number of subplots that are required to sustain a series of TV, um, our books would be bloated messes <laughs> and the readers would be like, there are too many characters and there's too much going on, but a TV show needs all that extra stuff. Film, conversely, may have to pare down what's going on in your book because it has to be a tight hour and 30 or two hours. And very often they'll make changes and tweaks. Sometimes the changes and tweaks are based on the talent who's attached and there have to be rewrites and changes to characters based on that. And also just being visual mediums, there are things that are gonna work in film and TV that where they have to change something from your book. And you have to be a little bit, you have to let go of control at a certain point and be a little less precious. And of course, none of us want to say our book baby's ruined by a bad film or TV adaptation. That's definitely like a nightmare. But like at the same time, simply having your book made into a film or TV show, like that's always going to represent some sort of pro or lift in your career. At the least, you're gonna get a nice payday and money is really, really nice, but it almost always leads to um, a boost in your profile. Like more people are gonna know the name of your book and more people are gonna know the name of you as an author. It's almost always going to increase sales because film and TV is very mainstream and like all of a sudden your thing is reaching a ton of people. Love or hate, they may have problems with the thing that was made and that might make them more interested in the books, honestly. So it's mostly, a net positive so yeah it's amazing if you get a film agent it's amazing if your thing is option it's double triple amazing if the thing is actually made almost regardless of what the product is but generally just like don't go in to book writing expecting any of this or banking on any of this and be pleasantly surprised by all of it and then bathe in all the free money if things go well so that is kind of how it all works with film and TV, with uh, books and getting things made. Let me know down below if you have any questions. I feel like you will. As I said, I've asked people, I know a ton of questions about this because I find this really, really interesting. And give this video a thumbs up if you like it and I will make more videos about kind of the nitty gritty of process of like publishing and author stuff. If you're not our subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching and happy writing.